bueno, saludaba a todos y, y decía que vamos a dar comienzo al segundo, día, al segundo día de este curso dedicado a capital social, factor de competitividad y desarrollo social, una segunda jornada que pretende dar un paso más en el conocimiento de, las, de experiencias prácticas y mediciones concretas de lo que supone el capital social. Durante, a lo largo de este día, eh, durante el día de ayer tuvimos la oportunidad de, pro, de profundizar a través de las ponencias de Rafael Pardo y de Antoine Belbord en el conocimiento de las distintas definiciones que se han dado de capital social y de, las, y de los diferentes puntos de vista que encierra este y que incorpora este concepto. Pudimos comprobar que este concepto está en, en construcción tanto por la novedad de, de su planteamiento como de la dificultad de su contenido, que se refiere a algo tan inmaterial y ta, algo tan especial y abstracto como son las relaciones eh, sociales. Ayer también, eh, desde esta tribuna, se manifestaba cómo, eh, las, eh, cómo las mediciones existentes hoy en día son ciertamente diferentes eh, de unos sitios a otros, y cómo era necesario que se realizaran mediciones eh, por los diferentes institutos de estadística. Hoy pues, nos vamos a centrar fundamentalmente en aplicaciones eh, existentes en esta materia y concretamente eh, en esta primera intervención vamos, eh, a, eh, va a correr a cargo de un miembro de una oficina estadística, eh, de, una oficina eh, de un miembro de una oficina estadística como es la finlandesa y que esperemos que a buen seguro podamos avanzar en responder a la última de las preguntas que se lanzaron aquí en la sala, ¿no? ¿Para qué medir el capital social? Esperemos que, bueno, a lo largo del, del día de hoy podamos, de alguna manera, avanzar un poco en esta respuesta, ¿no? Para todo ello, eh, contamos hoy con la presencia de Laura Lisaca, eh, que, impartir, eh, que impartirá dos eh, ponencias. La primera de ellas eh, se centrará concretamente en la medición del capital social y aplicaciones. Y vamos a dar un breve, unas breves notas sobre, sobre quién es Laura Lisaca. Eh, Laura es máster en Ciencias Sociales por la Universidad de Helsinki, donde, re, donde realizó su tesis sobre las diferencias en capital social en el cotejo entre países y categorías socioeconómicas. Actualmente trabaja en la oficina estadística finlandesa en el Departamento de Estadísticas Sociales, siendo responsable estadística en la estadística de distribución de la renta. Ha sido también jefe de proyecto de capital social, del capital social finlandés y también es investigadora eh, o ha sido investigadora en servicios de entrevistas y encuestas. Ha trabajado eh, también en el Centro Finlandés de Pensiones como asesora y en la Universidad de Helsinki. Eh, en el Departamento de, de Ciencias Políticas y Sociales eh, ha venido realizando un trabajo un eh, que, que trata sobre un estudio sobre las mayores encuestas o las principales encuestas finlandesas que contienen preguntas respecto al capital social. Y bueno, y podemos eh, mencionar algunos otros trabajos o artículos realizados como las diferencias en capital social en el cotejo entre países y categorías socioeconómicas. Eh, ¿Qué pueden decir las estadísticas oficiales sobre el capital social o medición del capital social en la estadística, los campos de capital social? Bueno, sin más, eh, viendo que aunque bueno, es bastante joven, pues ya tiene una trayectoria bastante amplia en esta materia, pues eh, dejamos que ella nos lo explique. Laura. So hello for everybody and good morning. So I won't introduce myself anymore because you already heard something what I have been done. But I have to say that uh, I became familiar with the social capital issues in the year 2002 and since then I have been working a little bit that kind of issues. So here's the outline 
of my lesson. I will tell, of course, some background for the measurements, a little about the problems with definitions, and then introduce some data sources, and telling some social capital key dimensions that has been used in the measurements. And the main issue is here to introduce the different statistical frameworks for the measurements that has been done in statistical offices in different and in OECD and the World Bank. And maybe I also tell something about social capital outcomes, although they have also introduced a little yesterday, and then a little about economic debate if I have time. <laughs> uh, when we are measuring social capital, I'm certain that we will meet or f face these kind of questions. Like, what is social capital? What is the defini definition? What definition should we use? And what are we measuring? What are the key elements of the concept? And which data should we use? when measuring social capital. And then also a difficult question about whose property is social capital, what is, what is the appropriate unit of analysis, and why should we measure social capital. So as you already heard yesterday, there's no single universal definition of social capital. Still, it has become very popular, and there's also growing interest in the measurement of social capital. For many, it seems to be easily approachable. However, neither the concept nor the measurement is well defined yet. So that's why you will certainly meet some difficulties. Usually in the measurement, Uh, distinctions are usually made between key components or dimensions which are then used to measure the concepts. And there seems to be general acceptance of some suitable indicators that are usually used in the measurements. These are the networks and also trust, especially trust in other people. I think you already heard yesterday something about these trust measurements. And in spite of this some kind of popularity, not many large population-based studies has, have been done yet. Instead, many studies contain only one or few indicators of social capital, or they are based on a sample survey that contains only a small sample of a certain population or subgroup. And there's also growing interest in the measurement of social capital with official statistics. That's why I have been doing also these social capital <coughs> issues. And there have been uh, quite big programs on this issue, issue in national statistical institutions in UK, Australia, <coughs> Canada, New Zealand, and also Finland. And of course these international organizations also. Still, the compilation of statistics of social capital is only taking its first steps. So unfor unfortunately, I can't give one example on how, to, how you should measure social capital. But I'll just give some examples. In the measurements, you could say that there's two different uh, camps in the field of social capital measurements. It seems, uh, social capital seems to appear to be an invention made in sociological research. However, the earliest applications of the concept related closely to issues of economic policy. And experience of assessing social capital originates from concerns of economic theory, such as the theory of endogenous growth and its applications in regional economics. But for many economists, 
the problems in understanding the nature of social capital as capital are so overwhelming that they lose interest in participation in the research debate on social capital. That's why usually sociologists are those who have been measuring so social capital lately, at least in Finland, but I think also in other countries. And for the sociologically oriented research, the question on whether social capital is capital or not seems to be mainly uninteresting. And then the measurement is usually concerning the trends in social capital or the level of social capital when you com compare the level, level of social capital in dif different subgroups or in different countries, or then the long-term trends in social capital, for example, that has been done by Putnam in the USA. And it seems that these two different camps, the sociological and the economist one, seldom discuss with each other today. And I won't give any different definitions anymore, but I start just say that in recent years, the OECD's definition has enjoyed widespread widespread approval. According to this definition, social capital consists of the networks together with shared norms, values and understanding that facilitate cooperation within or among groups. And this has been used in different social capital frameworks in Australia, in the UK, for example. Then, is, a social, is social capital, capital or property of an individual or a community? This is a little bit uh, theoretic, but it's important when you are measuring social capital. Like, usually, social capital is understood as a group rather than an individual attribute. But in practice, this community level concept is usually measured by using individual based surveys. For example, David Halpern, an English researcher, has distinguished social capital into three different levels, which are micro, which means individual level, meso, or community level, and then macro, which is society level. And he points out that the interaction between these levels is extremely significant. And recently, it seems to be generally accepted that social capital can be seen both as a property of an individual or on a society or community. So you could say that it's accepted to measure social capital on the basis of questionnaires and on individual material. <coughs> And then about possible data sources that can be used in the measurements. Usually the measurement is based on utilization of existing interview and questionnaire materials. For example, World Value Survey or European Value Survey is very popular in the measurements. Because the uh, World Value Survey has been collected, I think, almost over, from, from over 50 countries all over the world. And then the second one is register data and official statistics. And the third one, third way is to collect separate data sets on social capital. There has been collected some in different countries, for example, in Canada and Australia. And you could say that existing material contains information on many essential aspects of social capital, which means that it's not necessary to collect a special social capital always. But, sorry. <laughs> yeah.
and this national investigation that has been done in different countries, they have made investigations of the major surveys that contain questions related to social capital. And it seems that there is plenty <coughs> of material, but still, um, it's required to get, get to use different data sources side by side. So the measurement is not usually achievable using just one data set. And you have to also remember that the used data is often designed for other purposes than for the measurement of social capital. Why measurement sometimes suffers from the lack of suitable data. And also it's difficult to measure some, some issue when you have to use lots of different data materials at the same time. As I already said, social capital measurement is usually based on examining different indicators that rep represent social capital's key components or dimensions. And the interest usually lies in comparisons. In the level of social capital, when, when there has been comparison between different countries or regions, or the long-term trends, as Patnam has done. <coughs> and usually the measurement has been done on, on the basis of, of using one indicator, but also there has been a multivariate analysis that contain many indicators that has been analyzed at the same time. And for example, some, some results is that a study of the social capital in European countries found out that on the whole, European countries and regions appear not to be substantially different in the levels of social capital, with one exception of the Northern, Northern Europe and Scandinavian <coughs> countries, where the social capital level seems to be slightly higher. But it depends on the measurement that has been done because there are also other results that has been showing that social capital level in southern Europe differs quite much from the central Europe or northern Europe. So there are quite many different opinions on this. But still, social capital seems to be strongly gendered and is related to religious beliefs and behavior, and also to a political left-right stance. And there seems to be results on accumulation of social capital. Like people who have higher education level, who live in households with higher incomes, and who has a place to work, they, are, they have usually more social capital than, than others, than people who are poor or unmarried, and so on. Even there has not been any general agreed way to measure this multidimensional phenomenon, there is general acceptance of some suitable indicators, which are listed here. Networks, and you can divide networks into bridging and bonding, like you all already heard yesterday. Bridging networks mean some kind of formal network, such as participation in different organizations, And it refers to networking among, among different kinds of people or groups. Bonding means some, in, in the measurement, bonding networks means informal networks such, such as meeting friends or relatives. It, it describes closely knit groups or people who are very similar to one another or they already knew one another. And the most common way to measure trust is the, is the trust in other people. 
on the basic on the basis of this question, generally speaking, most people can be trusted. It has been used in word value survey and it's very widely used. I don't know which data yesterday was introduced. But here is a figure of this trust in other people. This is uh, uh, only one measure of trust and uh, this was scattered in 1995 to 1996, so it's already 10 years old. And according to this, Norway and Sweden has the highest level of, of trust and Brazil lowest level. Only 3% in Brazil trust one another. And Finland is a little behind other Nordic countries. And there is also Spain. Uh, which the figure of 30% trust other people. This measure has received a lot of criticism and somebody thinks, or many thinks, it isn't really a good measure, but still many consider it as a good and well-working measure when comparing different countries, because it gives quite good results to compare. And according to some other studies, uh, it has been sold differences in trust by gender, partnership, and especially the education. Usually women trust more. Also married people trust more than single ones, and those who have higher education are more trusting. and trust in different institutions and social support as giving and receiving help is usually quite widely used in the measurements. And the studies of the Robert T. Putnam are the most well-known studies. This uh, first one, Making Democracy Work in 1993, <coughs> describes the social capital <coughs> difference in Italy, in southern and compared to southern and northern Italy, and then bowling alone in the year 2000. In bowling alone, Putnam was interested in long-term trends of social capital in the USA. He also measured social capital in the American states and found out that social capital differed from very low to very high level between different states. And his main result was that social capital has been de declining since 1960s. Um, declining trend has also been reported in Australia and in the UK, <coughs> whereas the situation in Sweden, the Netherlands, and Japan is quite stable, or the level of, of social capital can be even rising there. So social capital is not declining everywhere, all around the world. Then I will introduce some, uh, give some results from my master thesis. The heading was the differences in social capital in comparison of countries and social economic categories. My aim was to investigate whether there were differences in the level of social capital between eight countries where income differentials were high, average, and low. High income differentials were in, in the USA and Australia, average income differentials in Spain, Germany, and Switzerland, and low income differentials in Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Uh, I also did this study on the basis of World Value Survey. And here are the measures like generalized trust, which is trust in other people, and then trust in different institutions, which are divided into political institutions and trust in, uh, or security institutions. And the third measure was participation in different associations. And according to this study, social capital, of course, is different between co different countries. 
social capital level was highest in, Nordic, in the Nordic countries, in Sweden, Finland and Norway, where income differentials were the lowest. But on the contrary to my hypothesis, the level of social capital was, was not lowest in countries where income differentials were highest, which was my hypothesis. And against this background, it could be said that cultural factors also play a significant role in the measurement of social capital. For instance, formal networks are more important in the USA than in Spain, where I think informal networks such as family, friends and relatives are more important than participation in formal groups. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to measure informal networks because the data didn't give, give it possible, make it possible. And now, can you see these numbers? But there are two tables about memberships and active involvement in vo voluntary organizations. And from the first table, you can see that <coughs> the membership level is the highest in Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Where about 70% belongs to at least one, mem uh, one group. And, and the figure is lowest in Spain. But when, when, when we are comparing active participation in these voluntary organizations, the results are a little bit different. It shows that um, active participation is the most common in Australia and USA and then comes Norway and Sweden. And Finland has quite the same figures than Spain. Like people are not so active in different organizations. <coughs> and, and the second table so, shows the num mean number of the memberships in different organizations. Like the total sum was one, one membership and in Norway, Sweden, and Finland, it was over one, and also in Australia, uh, in the USA. And Spain is all, also a little behind from other countries. <coughs> and finally, I will come to the, these different statistical frameworks that has been done for the measurement of social capital. And there has been a growing interest in the early 2000s decade to develop a harmonized system of the measurements and also incorporate social capital in official statistics. And the work is usually based on this OECD's definition that I showed you earlier. Social capital is most, mostly understood as a group rather than an individual attribute. But for technical reasons, measurement models are based on questionnaire and interview materials collected at individual level. Uh, New Zealand was the first, first country to introduce a statistical framework for the social capital measurements. The first framework was made in 1997 and its modified version was published in 2001. Yeah. I think you can. Okay, now. Oh, it's too small, I think. <coughs> it's quite small to see, I think so, maybe I... But as you can see from this picture, it has four, four different main components. Maybe I, I won't be using that one.
So these are the main components. Social capital has been divided into behavior, attitudes and values, population groups and organizations. For example, behavior means helping and supporting others, formal and in informal networks, compliance with rules and norms, and wider interest in society. And the second dimension consists of trust and reciprocity, attitudes to governments and social institutes, <coughs> and so on. Population groups is some kind of background information for the measurements. And there's, then there is also organizations that are one part of these measurements. On the basis of this framework, uh, Statistics New Zealand has listed suggested measures for the indicators of social capital. And they also identified a few indicators to be more useful to researchers. And they are listed here. Trust, civic engagement, voluntary activity, participation, giving, and meeting <coughs> obligations. And then there is some work done in, in, the Austra in Australia, in Australian Bureau of Statistics. And they have been really active in the field of social capital and in the measurement of social capital. This office has made one of the most comprehensive framework for the measurement of social capital. And the concept is built around networks, which, is, which are divided in according to their type, quality, structure, and transactions. They are listed here. They also listed some, some potential network participants that are family, friends, neighbors, work colleagues, organizations, and group, groups, people in general, and acquaintances. So in these, like, they are listed in here, potential network participants. So social capital can be, exist, exists among these different levels or groups. They have made uh, quite many different publications. Here is two of them, Measuring Social Capital, an Australian Framework and Indicators. It was made in 2004. There is this example of this framework. And Aspects of Social Capital, which was, which was done in 2006. And they are both available free on the internet from, from the side of a ABS. <coughs> So this looks a little different compared to that model in New Zealand. But you could say that there are still some many common things, like norms, and then also this many support, bonding, bridging, linking, and so on. And in, in the UK, Office of National Statistics, ONS, has been active, but not, not maybe late years, but a few years ago they were really active on this. And they had many, uh, they had one big project on social capital going on. It was the first to launch a systematic program aimed at developing a national model in social capital. This framework comprises the most widely used dimensions of social capital in the UK, as well as other factors that are crucial to understanding social capital. It has five main dimensions, and it, in addition, it, it, it also includes examples of indicators with which each dimension can be measured. And you can find this framework from the Harper and Kelly from the internet.
these frameworks are so wide, so, so I don't know if you can can see anything about this. So the both the these both describe the same thing. And I think this ONS model is the most simplest way to understand how to measure social capital. And there is these five dimensions. First one is social participation. Then there is civic participation, social networks and social supports, reciprocity and trust. And then uh, this is quite a kind of English way to measure the use of the local area. And this model has been quite widely used in, in other different countries for the measurement of social capital. And here are uh, also listed some examples on different indicators. I will also shortly describe the models of OECD and the World Bank. And OECD was really active also a few years ago. They had two international conferences concerning social capital. In London, they were discussing about inter experiences in different countries for the systematic measurements. And in Budapest meeting, meeting in 2003, they tried to make an internationally harmonized measurement framework, like uh, that kind of model that could be used in different countries all around the world. And in this OECD's model was made in, on the basis of this London conference, uh, no, this Budapest conference. And there was made a list of questions that could be used in international surveys as, as examples. And the list covers all other dimensions of, of the statistical framework apart from <coughs> trust. It was agreed that trust is a key dimension of social capital, but the conference failed to reach agreement on, on the specific list of questions. But there is, as you, uh, you can compare this OECD model to, to one that has been done by ONS in England. And it's quite uh, similar, like social participation, social networks and su support reciprocity and trust, and also civic participation. And here's also the World Bank's model. <coughs> World Bank main concern has been with the developing countries. So this is little different than others. It is particularly interested in developing methods of measuring social capital as part of an action program aimed at pre preventing poverty poverty and boosting economic growth. So uh, they are mostly interested in measuring the level of social capital in the local level in different developing countries. And this is only one, from one framework for the measurements because they have done quite many of these. Here is this all, all together, and as you can see, they look quite different to one another. And as I said, OECD and ONS are quite similar. And some conclusions from this. Uh, there can be found one key element of the concept of social capital in all, all of these measurement frameworks, and it is networks. And there can be also found some common dimensions 
from many of these. Um, they are in the trust, social participation, civic participation, as well as these networks divided into formal and informal ones. I won't be introducing this one because you already heard this was this research initiative was uh, the work done by Sandro Franke and it was introduced yesterday. Uh, Australia is still very active in the field of measuring social capital and they have just made a series of questions on social relations and participation in the 2006 General Social Survey. And they are going to publish some summary results on the basis of this survey and publication also on voluntary work. And they are also trying to establish whether social capital can be seen as a multidimensional concept or a set of discrete phenomena drawn together under a social capital umbrella label on the basis of more broad statistical analysis. And this is very interest, interesting and also important way to understand more about the nature of social capital and then about the measurement of social capital also. Because uh, it is totally different if you are comparing, if you are, is it, uh, there are some questions like, is it possible to measure social capital with one figure? Is it, or is it needed to be, to use these different dimensions and so on? And they are working on these questions. What are the associations between and within the social capital items? Are there factors that explain the variance across the social capital data items? Is it feasible to produce composite items or to get one figure of social capital for the measurements? And how are key social capital measures associated with other aspects of well-being? One of the key aspects of the concept and related research is that social capital is thought to have some outcome, that social capital has an impact and influence on something. Social capital is often used to explain success and well-being of societies, communities and individuals. And there are some examples of the outcomes of social capital that include improved public administration and democracy and create greater well-being in society. For example, Putnam has done this kind of research or improved health and economic growth and efficiency. And for example, trust seems to appear as a key a variable in growth, in, in the economic growth. And there has been studies, studies made that provide the most extensive cross-country tests of the relation between trust, trust in other people and economic, economic performance. And the central reason uh, for for why social capital is so popular is that from economic view, social capital is one of the alternatives to explain unexplained or residual variation in economics development between different countries. In, in the economic camp studies concerning, this is more about this economical debate that has been done in the field of social capital, but which is not so common nowadays. So there has also been, 
made studies concerning social capital uh, within regional economics in, in the sub-national level, which for some researchers it seems to be easier than measure social capital in the national level. Still, the measurement is not easier at the sub-national <coughs> regional level than at national or international level. And there has also been growing interest about measuring the volu volume of social capital as part of national accounts. I will give one example made in Finland on the, during the second lesson. And, and the World Bank has been interested about social capital more in the economic field of the study. And as I already said, they extended the notion of capital into aspects of wealth and sustainable developments when also social capital is mentioned. And here is... I'm sorry, this is black, black, so you can't see anything about the figure. <laughs> but uh, uh, this is uh, one result made in in the World Bank research. Hamilton and Ruta made this last year, and they found out what they called intangible capital that that it has a ma maturity share in all capital. And this share is the highest in the economically most advanced countries. <coughs> so the first figure is uh, low-income low countries, and then mi middle-income countries, and high-income high countries. And capital is divided into the three different <coughs> dimensions. Intangible capital, natural, capital and then produced capital. And this intangible capital includes human capital, governance, institutional effectiveness and all other capitals not mentioned elsewhere. And this last group, all other capitals, includes also social capital. So I'm sorry that it's not looking good. How do I, how do I explain? Yes, here. So this, this up, up here, this is this intangible capital that consists also social capital. And it, it has the largest share of wealth. And, and here in poorest countries, natural capital is more important than produced capital. Natural capital can be, I hope it can be seen here. And this is produced capital. And as you can, in, uh, in, in these high-income countries, <coughs> this intangible capital has the mo <coughs> highest share of all capitals. It's about, it's 80, <coughs> this share here is 80%. And in this one, it has, the share is 68%, and here, 50, 59%.
a few weeks ago in Switzerland was a conference of European statistics statisticians, and they had a seminar on measurements on capital beyond the tradi traditional measures, and there was also a session on measurement of social capital. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> So there was a session also concerning measurement of social capital. And because usually social capital is measured by using different types of questionnaires, while the conference was interested about questions like, can these questionnaires be used in the measurement of social capital in a national accounting context? Is it possible to measure productiv productivity gains of social capital? <coughs> so there has really been a wide in interest in the measuring this so-called volume of social capital and social capital, capital as part of national accounts. But the conclusion from this seminar was that social capital is still too far away from normal and continuous measurements because there isn't one definition or agreed way to measure this issue. But still, it de describes this interest of taking social capital into more economic debates and measurements that has become more real. So if you are thinking about measuring the volume, it could be done uh, maybe as part of national accounts, um, could be possible only in some kind of in satellite accounts or something. Uh, some results has been done quite similar in how in household satellite accounts. So measuring volume of social capital could be a key to this way. And in this case, both negative and positive social capital should be measured. But it's not easy. The productivity of social capital could be measured at the inter enterprise level at the moment, but not at the individual level yet. And then the shadow price for social capital is needed. But the problem is that there are so many different causal effects in national accounts that how can you show that social capital is getting some making some economic growth or this kind of thing but this is really interesting and search on these matters should be done I hope <laughs> And for the conclusion, lots of measurement has been done, and lots of material is available. Still, you could say that <coughs> there is lack of suitable data in many times. And there's a common need to find out more about this multidimensional nature of social capital. It is not satisfactory to examine just a single dimension of the concept and consider it as re representative of the whole concept and analyze its effect on economic performance. And analysis still suffers from the difficulty to address different outcomes on macro level and in economics, because this is the form of capital. It should have some economic outcomes. So that's why this is so important, this ep economical level. And final question is that can social capital be measured in an internationally harmonized way in different countries? Thank you.
Bueno, muchas gracias, Laura, por tu primera exposición. Y bueno, eh, ahora tenemos unos minutos en que podemos eh, hacer eh, nuestros comentarios, podemos presentar preguntas. En principio yo creo que vamos dando de alguna manera cumplimiento al objetivo concreto que, estábamos, eh, que habíamos establecido en la jornada de hoy, que es empezar a concretar algo más, eh, bueno, pues el, los conceptos, ver qué indicadores exactamente... Eh, eh, se, eh, está, se están manejando dentro de este, eh, por las diferentes eh, oficinas. Lógicamente hay una primera parte que, que es necesario seguir clar, eh, clarificando los conceptos, como al final ha comentado Laura, que todavía hay que seguir concretando mucho más, pero bueno, ya estamos con unos márgenes, yo creo que más, eh, más estrechos, eh, estamos ya trabajando sobre eh, conceptos eh, más concretos. Se han visto que, bueno, que existen unos marcos eh, por oficinas estadísticas. Lógicamente son las eh, oficinas estadísticas más avanzadas de, en todos los temas. Son las, las que siempre presentan, eh, bueno, pues siempre acotan los, eh, las, los, las estadísticas, los marcos más novedosos. Es de esperar que el siguiente paso es que ya el marco sea el armonizado ¿no? entre las diferentes estadísticas. Yo ahí se me presentaba una... Una pregunta un, para Laura, en el sentido de cómo ve a, un poco a la Organización eh, Estadística Europea, Eurostat, eh, sensibilizado ya a nivel de, de organización por este tema. ¿Qué prioridad ve que, que tiene dentro de estos marcos, el configurar un marco común en este tema? Que, ¿Qué prioridad se está dando dentro de Eurostat o, o si ella tiene o percibe algún... No sé, algún, alguna sensibilidad en este, en este tema. Uh, actually, I think they are doing nothing on these issues. They have discussed a few years ago. There was some discussion, but it wasn't on social capital, but uh, some networks or some relationships, but I think they are not interested in measurement of social capital. Mm -hmm. The OECD has been more, more active. Bueno, pues es una pena, ¿no?, la respuesta, pero bueno, eso no nos va a desanimar de ninguna, de, de ninguna manera, por lo, por lo menos los que estamos aquí, por seguir avanzando en, este, en un marco. Yo creo que hay referencias, entonces, pues bueno, habrá que, habrá que avanzar en ellas. Bueno, abrimos un poco el turno de, de comentarios, preguntas que se os hayan planteado. Uh, I just still have to say that this slide shows, shows this seminar on this also social capital measurement. This was uh, uh, done in the UN, some smaller groups of, of the UN organization, and they also find out that social capital cannot be still measured in a harmonized way, so that's why they are not getting it on again, uh, agenda. So. <laughs> Sí, quería hacerle una o dos preguntas. El capital social finalmente se mide normalmente a través de un índice multifactorial ya sea por encuestas o por otros métodos. Pero yo me pregunto, el resultado que nos da este índice, que mide el capital social de una, de una nación, en realidad, ¿sabemos qué quiere decir esto? Es decir, eh, parece que habría que relacionar en los índices obtenidos con alguna variable 
que, que es en realidad lo que queremos medir, ya sea, yo qué sé, pues, eh, la felicidad, si estamos contentos con los vecinos, o si mejora la renta per cápita, pero claro, sacar un índice a base de cuestionarios y un índice multifactorial, al final tampoco sabemos qué quiere decir esto, si no lo relacionamos con alguna variable que es el objetivo que perseguimos con el capital social. Hay esta contrastación estadística de los índices de capital social con la variable cuyo concepto es el que queremos alcanzar, el objetivo que queremos alcanzar. Uh, uh, what I say? <laughs> I think there is a common need to find out uh, more on social capital and this is what has what are been doing they are doing in, in the Australia in Australian statistical office uh, but of course you you should link the social capital measurements for example issues like happiness or well-being because So, so capital should have really this some kind of outcome, like so. I don't know if there there isn't very good examples of making one index of social capital, like putting all these different dimensions into one figure. There isn't a good way to do this. So it needs still more study. Quería hacer otra pregunta. Al principio he dicho que había sospechas o dudas sobre la medición del capital social desde el punto de vista económico. ¿Podría aclararme esto? Um, at first, I have to say that I'm not economics or economists. I'm from, have done my studies in social science. Uh, but, uh, economic view thinks that it's too difficult to measure social capital, as I described somewhere here. Like they have serious suspicion. Sus business on the use of this concept. So that's why the me measurement has usually been done by social scientists. So they are, they are really questioning this way of the measurement. But I, I can't say so specific. Maybe tomorrow there's one lesson on this economic view, so maybe you can hear more then. Respecto a la medición del capital social, esto es algo que puede llevar a a discusiones más profundas y largas, ¿no? Pero yo creo que al hablar sobre todo de las estadísticas, igual no es, tan impo es importante medirlas, porque necesitas conocer el dato, a qué nivel estás, pero también es conocer la variable cualitativa, es decir, qué es lo que nos están aportando esos datos, es decir, entender por qué en una región o en, una loca, en, en un municipio o en, o en un país eh, la felicidad es de un 5 y en otra es de un 3 o es de un 1 o es de un 1 lo importante es entender qué es lo que hay detrás de eso qué es lo que hace que en un país sea un 5 qué es lo que hace que en un país sea 3 y en otro sea un 1 es decir, eh, deberíamos de conjugar esa medición, esos valores cuantitativos del, del capital social con aquellos aspectos más cualitativos de, de las razones que hay detrás de, de esas variables. ¿no? 
Y eso es lo que hace realmente difícil realmente medir el capital social, porque no es solamente medirlo, es también valorarlo, en mi opinión. Y que ya digo que esto puede llevar a, a discusiones más, más profundas y, y largas. No sé si contesta un poco a, tu, a tus dudas, porque, no sé, en mi opinión no es... Eh, aumenta tus dudas, fíjate. Bueno, eso es bueno, ¿eh? Eso es bueno. Eso es bueno, porque tampoco se trata de que todo esté claro. Pero eso es un poco mi, mi opinión. Y lo que realmente el capital social nos ayuda es hacer una comparativa. ¿no? Una comparativa de la situación de diferentes sociedades, diferentes regiones, diferentes niveles, en, en esas dimensiones que estamos, que estamos valorando. Que una sociedad sea más participativa que otra nos puede llevar o puede llevar a los políticos a los que tienen que hacer esas leyes, tienen que fomentar esa participación, a tomar decisiones para fomentarlo. Pero, Tenemos que ver el aspecto práctico del capital social, no el teórico. Eso supone, previamente, eso supone que previamente has decidido que participar es bueno. Pero es bueno para qué. Sorry. <risa> Lógicamente tú vas a decir que participar es bueno para algo. O sea, que lo mides en cuanto a que esa participación en un club, en una, en, o en una sociedad eh, religiosa, te está aportando unos beneficios concretos. O sea, la medición del capital social debería ir unido a que tú consigas algo. Y además está en la base de su definición, es decir obtenemos beneficios comunes para todos entonces es necesario negar que ese capital social nos está aportando algo realmente porque lo demás sería ese capital social negativo del que también se ha hablado a lo largo de estas de, de los dos días ¿no? sobre todo de ayer ¿no debería estar ligado a que tú consigues algo? Sí, no sé si So, so capital really has this outcome, so it gives some benefits to you. That's why it is so interesting. But it's also difficult because it's so difficult to uh, find out these correlations between social capital or participation and then in the level of happiness or well-being. It is very difficult to show this in practice. But you are correct, and you are correct also about this that we need both qualitative and quantitative studies that brings together, and hopefully we we will understand more about social capital after these, all of this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sí, desde luego aquí hay un debate, ¿no? Entre lo que es los números a secas, lo que hay detrás, que, que de alguna forma la comprensión de ese número, no todo lo que, que lleva el que en un, nivel, en un lugar haya un nivel o otro, pero saber a qué se refiere y por qué. Esa es la labor un poco en el tema estadístico, por lo menos a, a los que estamos en este negocio, es lo que nos interesa, dar respuestas, es decir, un nivel u otro hace referencia... No obstante, luego entremos en otro, supongo yo, en otro campo, que es decir, si esto es bueno o no, de ahí que los marcos eh, homogéneos pues sean muy interesantes, porque si no cada uno podemos aplicar nuestro, nuestro marco, nuestra perspectiva, y eso creo que no, no es útil para lo que es la estadística. En cualquier caso, esto es el debate y, oye, podéis eh, seguir preguntando o aportando. A mí sí que hay un tema que me interesa, si no hay otra cuestión que no veo que ya un poco más de, de tipo estadístico, ¿no? Yo intuyo que detrás de esto no es hacer una encuesta únicamente, sino que hay unos análisis eh, bastante especializados. ¿Podrías un poco comentarnos, eh, una vez que se tienen datos, por ejemplo, de encuestas, o qué tipo de análisis eh, se suelen hacer eh, en esta línea? que supongo yo que serán análisis especializados y específicos. Uh, did you mean different methods or different search 
field of search like health study or más bien a las herramientas estadísticas propiamente Sorry. más bien a las herramientas estadísticas que se utilicen los métodos un poco en ese sentido o sea el análisis estadístico posterior a, a tener los datos de una encuesta por ejemplo Yeah. Uh, as I earlier said, many methods contain only one dimension or one indicator for the measurements. But usually, if you you are doing more multidimensional <coughs> research in the field of measurements, then they are based on on factor analysis and then principal component okay. analysis and these kind of things. So... Analysis factoriales. Yes. Sí. Bueno, pues... Si no hay ninguna otro, otra pregunta, un poco eh, terminaríamos aquí la primera parte de la exposición de Laura y nos juntaríamos a las 11 menos cuarto.